welcome to Tea Talk with Sushmita. My today's guest is the American-born actor and musician who uh, started his film career in India in 2007 with Lawrence of Punjab Presence and Chini Kam. Over the years, he has acted in leading and supporting roles in several blockbuster movies and television series. However, it is his portrayal as Bob in the much acclaimed Disney Hotstar series Arya that has made him a household name. Please welcome Alex Ponel. Welcome, Alex. Namaskar, Sushmita. How are you? How are you? How are you? I am fine and thank you very much. It was a very good introduction. So uh, thank you very much. You've done your research. Yes, yeah. 2007 till now has been quite a ride. Yeah. Um, and obviously I'm, I'm, over, I'm overwhelmed with the support that I've gotten uh, for my most recent uh, release, Aria. And obviously over the years, uh, so much support, so much love and kindness uh, over the past 13 years for over 35 films and series. So. It's lovely to be joining you on Tea Talk. This is the first time I've been on Tea Talk and I'm very excited to be here. I have my tea right behind me, which we can chat about in a moment. It's very special tea. Yeah, we'll talk about you, that. You have, you have milk tea. I have green tea. Yeah, uh, it's not milk tea. I just have put a little bit of milk because I brewed my black tea a little too much. Ah, okay. Yeah, but that's so. That's so it's, it's, it's a rescue tea. It was it's a rescue almost tea. destroyed. <laughs> it's an after right, the rescue. Good. Yes. Good, All good, right. good. I'm glad. I'm glad it's working out, though. I'll just pour myself a little bit more of yeah. my tea, which I'm very excited to tell you about, by the way, because I don't think you've ever had tea like this on your show. I anyway, let's, let's dive in. Yeah. Yes. So you are now in at home, right? In 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 Netherlands. So how has mm -hmm. it been going? How is the lockdown? What's keeping you busy? What are you doing? Uh, either uh, lockdown, nay. लेकिन थोड़ा अजीब है क्योंकि पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्ट में सब लोग मास्क पहने हैं बट इट्स फाइन थिंग्स आर ओपन सब दुकानें खुले हैं और आदमी बीच पे है और यू नो देर नो लॉकडाउन हियर एज अपोज टू इंडिया एंड इंडिया इट्स आई हियर इट्स गेटिंग इवन वर्स सो आई एम आई एम प्रिवलेज टू बी हियर आई एम लकी टू बी हियर आई एम हैप्पी टू बी हियर Um, I'm here actually in the Netherlands on the coast, a small town called Katwijk aan Zee. And it is uh, a beautiful little town. I've been here since I left India on the 31st of April. So it's been, it's been a while that I've been gone from my beloved India. Um, mm -hmm. But I did spend a, a month and a half, I think, in lockdown in Lokanwala. And then after that, I figured, you know, this was a great time to come and spend time with, with my family here. My mom lives here. So whenever I'm not shooting, I jet off to the Netherlands. It's a nine and a half hour flight, so it's not that far. Um, but I, I come, I try to improve whatever I can. Right now, we're in the middle of a lot of construction. Um, so I've, I've kind of been missing from social media. I've been missing from interviews uh, for a little while because uh, getting all the windows replaced, getting the insulation replaced, we got a new water heater. We got solar panels on the roof, the first house in the neighborhood to okay. be totally energy neutral. Which is super exciting for me. I'm I'm yeah. a geek when it comes to this kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, the solar panels are up on the roof, and the electricity powering my laptop right now is coming from the sun, and it's a really cool feeling. So I come here as often as possible to spend time with mom. Um, when I had the chance to to leave India and and uh, come back for a little while, I took the chance. I took the last. Uh, I think it was one of the last relief flights out from the Netherlands citizens leaving India and coming back via Amsterdam. Um, and uh, it's been a beautiful summer, running on the beach, getting in better shape, focusing on music. Um, but I'm, you know, longing to get back to India. I've got three films that are in various uh, stages of, of completion. I've got three more films that are ready for release. So everyone is itching to go. Everyone's itching to get back to work and get back to seeing releases. Um, it, it's, uh, it, it's both, uh, uh, you know, a privilege to be in the Netherlands, um, but at the same time, it, it is, uh, it is uh, sad um, to not be doing one of the things I love most, and that is making movies and making series. Awesome. So tell me, um, you grew up in the USA, right? In New York, if I'm not wrong? Right. That's correct, just above New York, Connecticut. Okay. So uh, when and how did you know that you wanted to be a, you know, you want to be an actor? How did that happen? 
Oh, wow. Okay. So I think um, it kind of started when I was really young. I was nine years old and I, I began acting on stage it's in school, like most people do. Um, you know, you have school plays. And so I, I kept doing that. It became one of my central interests. I always played uh, soccer and I taught myself to play guitar and I was writing music. But um, I, I was kind of a shy kid and theater was a way that I could kind of make really good friendships. You know, uh, they say that when you uh, go through a stressful experience with someone or when you go through a high stakes uh, um, uh, experience with someone, you make a, a stronger bond than if you just meet someone in the hall or if you meet someone in a coffee shop or something. You know, in fact, that's what they recommend for first dates. Go on a date that scares both of you and you have that, you have a bond. Um, <laughs> so uh, being on stage is scary when, when, especially when you're a kid, um, when you're first being introduced to theater, it's a totally new experience. And the people that I acted with as a kid and then as a young adult, because obviously I went from, um, you know, uh, theater in school to regional theater. And then after that, when I was in Boston, Massachusetts, I did theater, I did modeling there, et cetera. Um, but those, those, those relationships stay with me till this day. Um, you know, one of, one of my directors, Tom Peterson, who directed one of my first plays is still in touch. He shoots me a message from time to time. He reminded me that I think we've known each other for 25 years now, which is a long time to know someone. Um, but, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it's been an interesting journey that began when I was about nine. I did my first few plays, uh, The Outsiders, um, and then, you know, went on to do Grease and Camelot and all of those kind of quintessential musicals and also dramas and comedies. And that's kind of where it began. But I took a break when I was uh, going to university. I studied philosophy and psychology. And then I started up again when I got out of university and, uh, and did my first, uh, my first films in India, as you mentioned, in 2007. Hmm. Wonderful. You have worked with some of the big names in Indian cinema, right? Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, all, all of them. Absolutely. All of Every them. single one. You name yeah. one, I'll tell them that I'll tell you the film I did with them. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you would tell us the name. It's a fun it's, game. Yeah. yeah. So it, 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 in Bombay, you have worked uh, you a lot. You have worked a lot in South Indian movies. You, I also True. think that you have worked in Bengali in my, in my state. Uh, so share some of your most exciting experiences from here. Well, let, let's let's kind of work backwards, Sushmit. You know, yeah. one of one of my favorite industries is is the Bengali industry. Um, uh, I've had uh, two films release in uh, West Bengal in the uh, Bangla language, um, which I absolutely yeah. adore. The first the first one, well, well actually, Chittagong is in Hindi. So we shot Chittagong in uh, West Bengal in Gurumara National Park, which is a beautiful place. You know, you yeah. go to work in the, in the morning at 5.30 a.m. and you see the, the, the elephants walk across the road or the peacocks, you know, walking with you as your car drives along. Such a beautiful place. I urge yeah. whoever gets the opportunity to go, please go. Um, and, and in fact, that was the first project I did with, I did with Raj Kumar. Uh, Raj Kumar Rao and I have done three projects now. That was the first one we did together. And uh, we were both avid runners at that time. We both still are. And I remember we were running through the jungle once and because um, we would just kind of, you know, run to keep in shape. And if you weren't shooting, it was a beautiful place to be uh, and just to see nature, be in nature. And we were running and we'd see all the villagers kind of looking at us with this puzzled expression. Um, and then we realized, you know, all the dangerous things that were there in the jungle, they were probably looking for what might be chasing us <laughs> because jogging for no reason is not something that people generally do in, in villages. But uh, it was a beautiful experience um, working in West Bengal for the first time on that film. Um, and then after that, you know, I, I shot Bo's Dead or Alive, uh, another series uh, that Raj Kumar Rao and I were in. Um, we shot a lot of that there. But then I, I, I did my first real uh, Bengali super hit film, which is Ethi Obijan, uh, me and Prasenjit Chatterjee, and, uh, Chatterjee and, and a bunch of other uh, wonderful actors. Um, and then after that, Ek J. Chilo Raja. Mm -hmm. And then now, uh, uh, Dave Adhikari and I are just about to finish Golandaj, which is uh, a, a huge, epic um, uh, rivalry between myself and Dave's character. Uh, on the football field and off. So it's, a, it's my first football-based film and I've been in love with football my whole life. Uh, it's my favorite sport. Um, you know, obviously I did Inside Edge, I played cricket, I learned cricket for that, but football is something that I've been doing since I learned how to walk. 
So it's nice to be doing um, that kind of sports-based film. And it's lovely to be working in West Bengal again. It, it's really a, a place that I always look forward to going back to. Kolkata is one of my favorite cities. Flurries has some of my favorite chocolates. And um, you know, I, I, I always look forward to, to my time there. And so I'll, I'll be back there, I believe in December to finish up Golden Dodge. Only a few more days to shoot. And then hopefully uh, we'll be able to show that to the world. Uh, early next year. So I'm very excited about that. But you know, we, I can talk for hours about my most wonderful experiences or working with this actor or that actor, you know, Sushmita Sen, another one of your uh, fellow Bengalis, um, uh, had her uh, kind of comeback with Aria, uh, which was a, a beautiful project. I urge people to see it. See it. It's on uh, Disney Plus Hotstar VIP. It's getting great reviews. As you mentioned in the opening, people have really responded to Bob Wilson. He's a very interesting character. He's this uh, Sanskrit shloka reciting um, Bhagavad Gita studying guy. Uh, and uh, the whole series kind of begins with his wedding um, and it ends with his wife's funeral. I hope I didn't spoil too much, but the point <laughs> is that there's a, there's a journey along the way that's very, very interesting. Uh, and people have responded amazingly well to it. But, but yeah, I mean, as you've mentioned, you know, whether it's Sushmita or Prasanji Chatterjee or, you know, uh, Vidya Balan and I worked together in Urmi, but Janili D'Souza was there as well, Prithviraj, Prabhudeva, um, you know, I, I did Joker That's with Akshay Kumar or Sinha. Uh, uh, revenue grosser in, 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 in Malalam, if, I, if I'm correct. Massive film. And, and no less uh, important was that it was directed and DOP'd by Santosh Shivan, which yes. is India's, one of, one of the world's finest cinematographers. Um, and one of the other DOPs on that film, one of the other cinematographers, Alphonse Roy, shot Still On My Mind, which was my debut music video. And he also shot um, uh, a film with me and Tanishta Chatterjee called Dr. Rakhmavai, that's in Marathi. So that also has yet to release. Everything is on hold because of, uh, because of the uh, current situation. And as soon as it clears up, there's gonna be a lot of my films coming out. So it's a very exciting uh, time to look forward to. But, but yeah, you know, I've, I've even in, in uh, uh, Notch Ballier back in, in I think, 20, 2008, uh, I, um, I danced with Shah Rukh Khan um, and, uh, and Salman Khan. And um, yeah, I, I've, worked with, I've worked with everybody. And, and, and it's been a truly uh, uh, blessed career um, to have started with Amitabh Bachchan in Shinikam, for example, yeah. um, and uh, uh, Manoj Bajpai uh, in Chittagong. Um, Navazuddin Siddiqui was also in Chittagong, and 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 even you know the newer generation, Randi Puda, Richard Chada, Adil Hussein in Mayor Charles. So yeah, we can just go on. I can name drop for the next forty five minutes, but uh, but yeah, I, I, I've been I've been lucky, I've been blessed, I've been privileged, uh, and I'm I'm eternally grateful for all these beautiful opportunities to work with. And I wouldn't just say to work with some of the best in India, but to work with some of the best in the world. You know, India has some of the best talent in the entire That's world, and it's been my, my privilege. Yes. Yeah, since you mentioned Arya already, so how did that happen? Number one. Number two, happens, you have to learn yeah. Sanskrit for this, right? So was that the scary part, or what was the, like a challenge? How did you take that? It's always a challenge. Languages are always a challenge. I'm, I'm the black sheep of my family with regards to languages. My sister, it can't get, it can't get worse than this. My sister is a professional translator. Mm -hmm. And I struggle with English. <laughs> I mean, I, I joke, but I, I, I'm certainly no linguist. Um, it's always a challenge. It's, it's a challenge that I've come to accept. Um, it's a challenge that uh, the, the filmmakers I work with understand. Um, so oftentimes there's a bit of jealousy uh, or, or a bit of envy, I might say, on my projects because I always have the screenplay weeks or months in advance and sometimes my fellow actors don't. Mm. Um, so I'm always very quiet about what happens if it's been kept a secret. Um, but I need to work on my language. Uh, and, and Sanskrit was, was no different. In fact, Sanskrit was a bit uh, more of a challenge because not many people speak it. I mean, folks in India uh, really only hear Sanskrit when, when someone's being born, someone's getting married, or someone's dying. Mm. So it's, it's really the priests that kind of control this language. Um, I that, have learned Sanskrit for two years, actually, when I was in You school. did? Yes. Wow. <laughs> well, the, the cool thing is that Sanskrit, and I, well, obviously, you know, you, 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 uh, you must speak Bengali as well, and it has a different script, but Sanskrit and Hindi share the same Devanagari. Almost so same. If you can, yes, almost, almost same. same. So if you, can, if you can read and write Devanagari, which I learned years ago, then Sanskrit 
it's a little bit easier because it's a very phonetic alphabet, right? Whereas in, in, in Roman English, you have an A that can be ah, uh, it can be uh, it can be a lot of things. Um, in, in Sanskrit, uh, using Devanagari, it really, really helps to be able to read and write. So, so I kind of had a leg up there, but it, it was still a huge challenge. Um, but to get back to your earlier question, how did, how did Aria happen? Well, um, basically the way that most things happen, I, I was contacted by um, the, uh, the casting director, Abhimanyu Ray, and he, he's one of India's best casting directors because he really understands the project he's casting for. And he doesn't waste people's time. If he, if he, um, if he calls you in for uh, an opportunity for a film or a project that he's working on, um, it's because it's for a reason. So uh, he and I connected on the basis of a totally different film that we're still looking forward to shooting when all of this uh, resumes. Um, but uh, a few weeks after talking about that film, he called me in for this project. And I think it was because we connected on music. He's got guitars around his office and uh, we were chatting about music. We were chatting about travel. We chatted about a lot of things. He's a very sweet guy. Um, and this particular role for the first time was, or at least for the first time for me, was blending acting and musicianship. Um, and so it was a dream come true for me. You, you know, I, I love films like The Doors or, or in Hindi, like Rockstar or Rock On or Ashiki Tu. You know, these are, these are beautiful amalgamations of music and drama and comedy and all this stuff mashed together, but the music isn't artificial. You know, oftentimes people uh, um, uh, criticize Indian cinema because songs just pop up out of nowhere. They're just kind of there and everyone knows the dance steps and everyone sings along and it's a little artificial. And what it does is it kind of pushes you out of this suspension of disbelief where you, you kind of uh, get pulled out of the story for a moment. You're like, oh, it's a movie. Mm -hmm. Those films that incorporate songs like um, A Star is Born uh, and do it organically where the scene leads into the song, which then leads into the next scene. Yeah. It's beautiful. And, and I've always wanted to do more with music and cinema. And I'd never had that chance. And in these uh, 13 years, 35 films and series, I never had the opportunity to mix music and film. And uh, this was the first opportunity. And I, I was so grateful for it. Abhimanyu explained the role to me. Um, did you see Aria? No, of course I did. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, I have to ask because um, the, next, the next question is, uh, you probably recognize the most uncomfortable scene for my character in the entire series um, that happens between him and Aru. Yeah. Uh, so that was the scene that Abhimanyu wanted to see me perform as a screen test. Um, and, uh, and so it was uncomfortable, but it, it immediately showed me that this series was going to be something unconventional. Uh, it was going to, uh, to be something people were gonna talk about. It was a character that wasn't wall dressing, which is something I always look for. You know, if you look through my IMDb profile, you'll see I don't really repeat the same roles more than once. And if I do a role, it's because that role has a purpose. Um, Bob is the personification of the Bhagavad Gita for the Indian audience, which is a crazy thing to attempt. I mean, Ram Madhvani is it's a very, very daring director. He trusted uh, Bob Wilson, this American guy, with something so foundational to Indian society, much of Indian society, the Bhagavad Gita. And he trusted me with Bob Wilson. And both of those two things were a stretch. Uh, so I'm, I'm uh, uh, obviously um, overjoyed to have portrayed that character, but it could have gone much worse. <laughs> it could have gone very badly. I think it is one of, um, the, it is one of the anchors in the, in the series, you know, the, you nobody know, expected it, that to happen. And no one expected like, it. Yes. And, and, and also um, it, it's, it's totally uh, unique. Mm. It's, it's, right. a, uh, it's a role that people have never seen before. Um, and, uh, and perhaps people will never see again, but, um, but more importantly, it does, as you've said, uh, uh, have a central role in, in the story, um, you know, underpinning all of what happens is, is this, uh, connection to the Bhagavad Gita. You know, people have, have kind of, uh, compared this series to the Godfather, but the Godfather lacks that. It, it, it doesn't have undertones of something so 
foundational as the Bible, the Quran, the Bhagavad Gita. I mean, this is a seminal text, the ideas of which are played out on screen while Bob is singing them um, in, in the soundtrack. Uh, and, and, and so it was just a beautiful role and an amazing opportunity from the moment I heard about it, blending music and acting, um, personifying this, uh, uh, this so incredibly epic poem from 2000 years ago. Um, just everything. The more I learned about the project, the more I wanted to be part of it. And, uh, and, and I'm, I'm so grateful that I was. Awesome. You also released this uh, song, right? The Bhagavad Gita song recently, right? I, I, yes, I did. I um, become quite a rage. I was looking through that. I was, in fact, I, I, I was searching in YouTube to see if there are any precedents of you know, anybody doing something like that, which I didn't found. So um, how did it feel to be, you know, the one to do this, to have a you know, song like yeah. this? It, it was, it was kind of, well, there, there are two versions. Uh, there are two songs that deal with the same uh, Sanskrit shlokas uh, that, that Bob uh, recites in uh, Arya. Um, one of them is uh, Vishal Kurana's composition, uh, which appears in episode nine at the end of the Arya series and end of the first season, um, which he's performing with his band Drishti, uh, which also features uh, Anurag, Tublu, Del Raz, um, Del Raz is a phenomenal singer and, and to, uh, um, to talk about her voice is, is it, I mean, it gives me goosebumps because she's such an amazing performer and she's a wonderful musician and she's a great friend. When I wanted to take those same shlokas and I wanted to um, adapt them to music of my own style, um, which is the song that I released, you can find it on my YouTube channel, uh, um, Alex O'Neill Music. Uh, and the, and the video features her as well. Uh, she just added so much. It was, it was truly beautiful what she added to my composition. Um, but yeah, you know, what, when, I, when I stepped into this, knowing that no one had done it before, I did my research as well. Um, no one has really uh, taken the Bhagavad Gita into either style, Indian or non-Indian. No one really has. Uh, no one's brought it in the direction that Vishal Kurana brought it. And certainly no one's brought it into the acoustic rock style that I did. Um, and so it, it felt really, really good um, for, for a couple of reasons. One, it's always fun to kind of be trailblazing, uh, you know, whether it was being the first non-Indian on an Indian dance reality show, uh, Nach Palie, which was an incredible experience uh, in and of itself, or, you know, uh, doing this kind of thing all these years later on Aria. Um, it, it feels good to kind of test the boundaries and, 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 and it feels even better when people's response is so positive to, to that experiment. Um, and beyond that, you know, Aria introduced perhaps a generation of viewers to something they never would have encountered otherwise, the Bhagavad Gita. And, and the, it has such beautiful messages, especially these shlokas that, that I've uh, incorporated into my own song, um, which are incredibly relevant today perhaps even more than ever, because, you know, th this, this song, uh, both songs, whether it's the one in Aria or the one that I subsequently released on my own, um, it's all about fighting. It's about fighting against injustice. It's about fighting uh, uh, against um, uh, racism, sexism, coronavirus, oppression. It's all about fighting. At its core, it's about fighting because, you know, th these shlokas uh, come from the Bhagavad Gita, um, Arjun is, is about to lay down his bow and arrow and uh, Lord Krishna, who is, who is disguised as his chariot driver, uh, kind of talks sense to him. He says, look, uh, it's not about winning or losing. There's no shame in losing, but there's shame in giving up. And, and that really spoke to me that, it, you know, especially in the midst of this pandemic, it's giving up that has shame, not losing. So even if you know, you're in the US and it looks like uh, it's impossible to fight against racism. It's impossible to fight against a system that's been in, in place for 250 years um, that benefits some people to the detriment of others. I mean, why would you think that in 2020, this year of all crazy things, mm -hmm. that you could change it? And, and Lord Krishna says, it doesn't matter if you think you can change it. It's your duty to fight against it. 
And, and you know, I love, I love that message. And I think that whether it's Vishal Karana's version uh, that's in Aria or my version that you can find on, on my YouTube channel, we're bringing that message, that 2000 year old message that's as important today as ever to an audience that otherwise would never hear it. And that feels really good. It, it, it's, uh, it's, it's really nice. And, um, you know, I, I'm just, uh, I'm grateful to have encountered the Bhagavad Gita through Arya. I'm not a religious person. I'm a spiritual person. Um, but I believe where there's truth, it should be spread. And I find that these passages are so filled with truth and filled with motivation um, that they're extremely important at this time um, to, to be heard. That is so wonderful. Oh, and, and, and by the way, if you go uh, to the YouTube channel, if you do watch a Bhagavad Gita song, uh, I have the translation in English I have um, yes. I have at, the, at the bottom. Yeah. So some people, uh, I got some messages saying, oh, I wish I knew what it all, what it meant. Um, and I said, you just have to click on the subtitles. <laughs> we spent a long time getting the subtitles uh, to fit properly. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm glad you, I'm glad you saw them. Okay. So since we are talking about music, Next question is about Still on My Mind. And mm. I think it's one of the most beautiful songs that I have seen heard in the <laughs> recent Thank you. years. Thank I you also so wrote to say that it is one of my favorite, if you remember the Instagram, right? I do. I appreciate yeah. that. I, 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 it's, I think it's been seen by over 200 and something thousand people. 125,000 um, people, yes. Yeah. And it's... Um, I, I'm overwhelmed by the response. You know, it's English music being released in India. I, I wanted to release it in India. It, it, meant, it, it meant a lot for me to release it in India because India has, has allowed me to explore my dream of, of being a film and series actor. And I owe India so much um, that I, I really wanted India to kind of be where I launched my music career. Even though it's English music, uh, it does star Shama Sikandar, who's a big deal in India. She's a beautiful woman. She's an amazing actress. Um, and uh, she, was, she was instrumental to not just the video, but also recording the music itself. Um, and, uh, and then my second release, a Bhagavad Gita song, was specifically for India. I, uh, you know, I, I was very, very clear about that, um, that it was my thank you uh, to India for not just accept, accepting me as an actor, but also for the response that I got to still on my mind, I almost felt like, okay, I'm just going to do it, release it. If nobody sees it. Okay. I was almost hoping for that because it's a very emotional, very personal story. Uh, and I was terrified that people would see it and not appreciate it or hear it and ridicule it. You know, it's always, it's always, it's, it's always very difficult to, to put yourself out there, mm. even though I've been out there for, you know, 15 years as, as an actor, uh, music is so much closer to my heart because it's all about me. It's like opening my journal to the world. And you always wonder, okay, are people going to love it? Great. Or are they going to hate it? Or are they just not going to care? And yeah, it, it's a difficult um, decision to come to, to, to release something so personal. Um, but I was inspired by the reaction to, to keep going. And my next song is coming out very, very soon. Um, I'm, I'm very excited about that. Yeah, it, it, it feels like very personal. And I think that's why uh, people have loved that song. Because it somehow connects with people, you know, the emotions and everything. Any, any, any background story to this music video? So to? many background stories. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of which I can share. No, you don't um, have to, whatever you can. But, but yeah, no, it, it's about relationships. You know, when, when it released, so that the lockdown hit, um, I was in the process of shooting three films. Um, I had uh, three more that were finished and ready to release. Uh, and boom, you know, I, I think I was, I was at a, a fashion week, a Times, Times of India, Times Fashion Week party uh, in Lower Perel when we got the news on our phones that all shooting was suspended. And I thought, wow, okay, um, this isn't gonna be a short-term thing because it, it's easy to see it was spreading all over the world. Uh, other places had, had locked down and I just stopped and I thought to myself, if not now, then when? You know, now I have this chance to focus on my music and get it out there um, because it had always been brought, I think there's two things. I brought it to the edge of releasing 
and then for a million, you can always find a million reasons not to do something, right? Um, so there was this reason why it wasn't the right timing or that reason why it wasn't the right timing. So I'd always put it off, but I think I was sabotaging myself because of that fear of releasing this very personal thing into the world and being afraid of people's um, reaction to it. So I, I finally sat down and I said, no, now is when I'm releasing this. And people said, oh no, don't release it in the lockdown. That's crazy. Everyone's, everyone's only concerned about what's happening with the lockdown. What's, is Modi going to extend it? Is he going to um, uh, make it stricter or loosen it. And I said, it doesn't matter. There's no perfect time. This is the perfect time because I've been waiting for the perfect time. I've been waiting for the perfect circumstances for years mm. and there will never be perfect circumstances. You need to take the circumstances and make them perfect. You have to take the timing and make it perfect. And, um, you know, would I have liked to have released it in a grand party, performing it on stage for all my friends and, you know, uh, yeah, of course I would, but, you know, it's not going to happen anytime soon. Yeah. So uh, it was either wait forever or do it now. And so uh, when it released, um, I think people attached to it, you know, so if I may, I'll, I'll just play one, one moment of it. Yes, please. So the chorus goes, You're all that I want. I can't live without you. You're all that I need. I can't live without you. You're all that I have. I can't live without you now. How do you live without me now? So the idea is it's a very, um, it's a longing song. It's a song about living without those that you love. And this pandemic meant that we were all doing that. Everyone was living without the people that they love. Um, whether it was a boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, you know, family, um, with the lockdown, everyone was stuck in their own homes. Uh, and, and I was, I was uh, lucky enough to have my, my very close friend, uh, Danny Sura, who also uh, uh, worked uh, with me in Eki Sarfrosh for Netflix, a, a beautiful series uh, that, that released a couple of years ago, and his two cats. So we weren't lonely. But we were certainly separated from many of the people that we loved. And, um, and, and so this song kind of spoke to that, um, that emotion. But it wasn't written for that, obviously. Uh, it, it's a, a quintessential love song um, about all the things that you realize after the fact you've done wrong. You wish you could change, but you can't. Um, and I'll leave it up to uh, listeners to figure out who I'm talking about because it's not that hard to figure <laughs> out, but um, you just have to figure out, okay, when did I write it? And then extrapolate backwards. Um, but, but yeah, I, you know, I, I've, been, I've been in some incredible relationships. I, I'm, I'm thankful for them. Um, they've made me grow as a, as a person and as an artist. Um, Sweta Keswani, who was uh, my, my wife, uh, she and I worked in Natch Balier. I never would have danced if it wasn't for her inspiration. Um, Shama Sikander, who um, uh, was uh, uh, instrumental in motivating me to record my music, also helped me create the music videos, and she's in them. So um, both of these women, and, and obviously before and after, have, have really helped me to explore my life artistically um, and grow as, as a person. So... Um, yeah, I mean, the, the lyrics, I think, and, and there's also captions on still on my mind, if you're curious what exactly is being said. I don't think I sing all that clearly all the time. Um, but if you're curious, the story is right there. And, and I think it's a story that so many people live through. Um, and that's, that's another reason why I think people have connected to it, because it's, it's universal. We always realize after the fact what we should have done at the moment. And it's oftentimes too late. And, and accepting that fact and saying, okay, it's too late. I'm going to dwell on it for a moment. I'm going to write a song and then I'm going to move on is cathartic for me. You know, that's why I only write sad songs <laughs> when I'm happy. I don't sit down to write a song. I'm out being happy. Uh, when I'm sad, it's when I pick up a guitar. So are you happy or sad now? Can you sing some, that same song for us a bit? How do you feel? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, I can sing it for you so I can perform songs. Um, when I'm happy. It's, a, it's writing them because you see, for me at least, um, the process of writing a song is taking extreme emotion and bundling it up and dwelling on it and sitting with a guitar and just 
going through chords and going through melodies. And while your mind is stuck in this moment, um, you, you turn that negativity into something that you think is beautiful. And in my experience, every song that I write gets stuck in my head, like your favorite song. If you remember your favorite song on a particular summer, you would play it 50 times over again and never get sick of it. Well, that's what happens when, you, when I'm writing a song. That, that's kind of my process. I come up with a melody and it sticks in my head, it sticks in my head and it, and it, it really just um, begs me to finish it as a song. Uh, and when you're happy and when you're going out with friends and enjoying your life and you just don't have the time to sit and dwell in negativity. So that's why my songs come out like that. But but yeah, I'll play I'll play a little bit of um, still on my mind, and I think you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. Insolent child, I try to freeze us in time. Pretend you're still mine, and I'll try till the moment I die to make amends for my crimes. There's not enough time, but I don't want to be a spotlight, and I don't want to follow you down. I don't want to be the man, the reason for your frown. I don't want to be your spotlight I could never follow you down And she said You're all that I want I can't live without you You're all that I need I can't live without you You're all that I have I can't live without you now How do you live without me now? Pretend that you're fine Shh. And let it pass and you'll remember the times When you live fast and never seem to look back I had to hold you tight to keep you from flight Remember those nights when I I could never fool your insight I could never settle you down and no matter what the news, I'd never see you frown When you picked up all my pieces And you never once let me down And you said You're all that I want I can't live without you You're all that I need And I can't live without you You're all that I have I can't live without you now how do you live without me now? How do you live without me now? How do you live without me now? You live without me now. You live without me now. And I said, you're all that I want. I can't live without you. You're all that I need. I can't live without you You're all that I have I can't live without you now How do you live without me now? Thank you so much. You're very welcome. It's been a while since I, I played that song. So I was, I was half hoping that I wouldn't screw it up. <laughs> You did yeah, it's been a little while. You know, I, 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 I'm focused now on, on the next song to release and I'm super excited to share it with everyone. But yeah, that, that song uh, will always be very, very close to my heart. And, you know, when you, when you write a song and then you um, uh, play it back, you go through those emotions that led to writing it. I think it's, it's similar to writing a poem. It, it's hard to read that poem without revisiting those emotions. Or if yeah. you write a journal, um, when you open that journal and you read a page, it all comes rushing back. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it was it was nice to revisit that moment. Thank you very much, Sushmita, for asking me to. My pleasure. So, you were drinking tea. So, 
Why don't you tell me something about your tea? The green tea that it's tea drinking. time with Sushmita. So I yes. am, of course, drinking tea. <laughs> yes. And I will tell you a little bit about this tea. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so the Netherlands is known not for growing tea, but for being one of those terrible colonial powers that got everyone else's tea, stole it, and made a name for having great tea. So, and we laugh about it, but yeah, I know it, it's, it is tragic, honestly. In, you tragic. know, interestingly, Netherlands is the country which introduced tea to in Europe. I believe it is. Um, yeah. Now, oftentimes when we look at history, we always think, oh, there was this one that did this or that. But uh, I think, yeah, it was one of the countries through which tea uh, began to be traded. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and certainly still even till today has some of the most amazing varieties of tea. So in preparation for our talk today, I opened Van Gogh Melenge. So okay. you would be familiar, it, you probably, it's probably backwards for you, I don't know. Um, is, it Van Gogh, is it coming from Vietnam? No, no, Van Gogh is uh, Van Gogh, uh, the oh, painter okay. uh, who's yeah, Dutch. Okay. Yeah. Um, and this is green tea that has, uh, obviously, green tea. It has gele rozenknopjes, which is Dutch for, I believe, rose petals, aroma, gingo, sorry, ginkgo, which uh, is another um, uh, one of the ingredients, uh, lemongrass, and korenbloemsen. So anyway, it's got a lot of things in it, and it looks beautiful. It's, it's uh, uh, yes, I can see that. <laughs> yeah. So in honor of tea time with Sushmita, I opened this for the first time. I wish you could smell it. I wish you could taste it. Um, I'm agree. a big fan of tea. I, I, I drink coffee like a madman in the morning for the caffeine. Then I wean myself onto black tea in the afternoon because it still has caffeine, but it's a little bit healthier than coffee. And then um, finally, green tea in the evening. And green tea, as I'm sure you know, because you're a tea fanatic, um, helps with uh, weight loss, uh, helps with heart health. Um, and also helps you to get to sleep because it's caffeine free naturally. So a lot of great reasons to be drinking tea. Yes, yes, that's great that you can tell so much about tea in like about two minutes. <laughs> I love tea, and, and so you know, I that obviously that's not in a tea bag. So yeah, so I can you see, see that you have the strainer. So I need that. It's a little tea egg yeah. that sits in the bottom, and um, and what's it called? diffuses the tea yeah, or steeps the tea yeah, steeps the tea the throughout tea. the pot but, you, but yeah. you can actually take out the the instrument out of your tea because otherwise your tea is getting bitter now it gets but stronger and stronger yeah, yeah. but i've actually I've, I've put uh you know just this much in that uh and, and it's for a whole pot of tea and i've got a tea light underneath so it's constantly heating it so yeah the yeah. taste will change over time it'll get yes. stronger and stronger and stronger um, but it's a very light tea as it is. Green teas are generally a lot lighter, even though it has all those interesting ingredients. Um, so it tastes better and better and better up to the last cup. So, so yeah, my tea is eeping right behind me in honor of tea time with Sushmita. Great, thank you so much. But did, uh, is, that your, is that your regular tea or what do you drink when you were in India? What do you drink here? In India, um, I drink a lot of instant coffee in India oh. um, because most of the time that I'm uh, at work, uh, I'm on location. So I, I do live in Mumbai. Uh, I live in Lokandwala um, on the uh, 14th floor of one of the towers there. So I have a beautiful view of the mangroves and I miss it. I really do. Uh, and every day I'm thinking of my friends and loved ones uh, in, in India, in Mumbai specifically. And um, uh, I, I run on that back road there when I don't have enough time to go to Versova Beach, which is where I usually run. Um, I do about an hour a day, uh, about nine to 10 kilometers a day. Um, but, but yeah, I, I end up um, drinking coffee a lot because I've kind of gotten used to that instant coffee uh, taste and I avoid milk coffee because it has a lot of calories. Mm. Um, Coffee itself, just without sugar, black coffee is generally what I rely on to wake me up because we always have weird schedules acting. You know, you may have a night shoot one day and a morning shoot the next, or you may be flying out right after shoot. It's always a bit of a, a logistical struggle um, uh, for an actor and, and coffee with its mm, heavy dose of, <laughs> of caffeine is always really helpful. But I, you know, I, I, I love milk tea. It tastes like candy. 
<laughs> but I can't, I can't, it literally tastes like candy, especially when there's ginger in it. Oh, that's oh, guy. So that's good. not tea. So good. Guy. <laughs> so good. I love it. It's just, it's addictive. I don't even think there's much tea in it, but no, it tastes so much. good. I call it, it, it uh, tea like flavored milk. Child. Yes, exactly. I think they, I th yeah, I think there's just like tea, like left over in the cup and yeah. then they just put something else in. There's barely any tea, but it's so good. I love it. Uh, it is so easy to get addicted to that on shoot. Um, so that's why I rely on, on, um, uh, on instant coffee because um, I don't want to go down that road to getting it addicted again to that beautiful, wonderful, fabulous tea, the amazing uh, uh, um, milk tea on set. Um, but yeah, so mostly instant coffee, but when I have the time, I make a nice big pot of, of, of green tea, usually green tea with lemon. Okay. In fact, you can try something called Indian breakfast tea. There, you know, there is English breakfast tea, there is uh, Irish breakfast tea. So I created a blend called Indian breakfast tea, which would give you the exact same kick as your uh, black coffee without the caffeine. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so well, then where does the kick come from? If, if there's no caffeine, then where does the kick come from? That's the question. No, tea also has caffeine, but <laughs> uh, half of, as much as in coffee. So, you know, All right. it's, it's, that way it is much good. Better. Yeah. Good. I'm going to give it a try. Next time I'm in India, you send me a yeah, bit. Yeah, I think that. Yeah. I will All enjoy right. it. Great. So I have now five, very quick five questions. You can answer sure. in one word, one sentence. So tea or wine? Uh, depends on the time of day. <laughs> Anytime after five, it's tea time is over unless you're going to sleep and wine time begins. Okay. So, yeah. All right. What's your favorite Indian food? Chicken kolapuri. And I, I hate to, uh, um, um, you know, insult all the vegetarians and vegans, um, but chicken kolapuri is the spiciest, most fantastic, most wonderful food ever. The best place I've ever had it is in Vashi railway station. It nearly killed me. I was sweating all over, but it was the tastiest, yeah. most wonderful uh, ever. And then, you know, a methi chicken, nimbu chicken, um, I usually get delivered home uh, just about every day or every other day when I'm in Bombay. I don't cook as much. I always cook my own breakfast, um, but yeah, lunch and dinner is usually out or ordered. Because Kolapuri foods are quite uh, spicy. I'm quite surprised <laughs> that you can have that. Well, yeah, yeah, I, I, I can, but uh, it certainly, it certainly is spicy, especially when you're digging out the pieces of chicken yeah. and you dig out, you know, a chili pepper that, that's that long. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So uh, a dream role that you want to play as an actor? We touched on this a little bit before. I want to do more with music uh, naturally incorporated into film. So, you know, whether that's uh, like, for example, A Star is Born and Ashiki 2 are so incredibly similar. I wouldn't be surprised if, if they took the rights for A Star is Born from Ashiki 2. I don't know. I'm not sure how that happened, but um, that kind of uh, film or rock star, I thought was amazing. It, that's a, a, also a beautiful fictional story or something like The Doors, which is, which is a biopic about Jim Morrison. Um, these films really speak to me. I would love to do um, more with music in film or music in series. Um, Aria was just the beginning. And, you know, if you see uh, a Bhagavad Gita song on my YouTube channel and you see the Bhagavad Gita song that's in Aria, you'll see they're completely different. different. But I love both styles. Um, obviously, the one that I released was much more Alex O'Neill. Um, but I, I, would, I would like to do a role that's kind of closer to what I write you know, uh, acoustic electric guitar as, it, as its uh, foundation. Okay, great. And um, your favorite Indian director who you want to work with? You know, it's always kind of like when you're in a room with a beautiful girl and someone asks you, who's the most beautiful girl in the world? You have to say <laughs> <laughs> the girl that you're in the room with. But you are uh, not you know in room with anyone now. <laughs> I, but I, but I, I am, I, I am. Um, okay. You know, if I, if I mention one name, it's gonna be, it's gonna be really, uh, really bad. But I have, Drubo Banerjee is the next uh, director that I'm shooting with, uh, Golan Daj when I get back um, to India. Um, Ram Madhvani has been a joy to work with. Santosh Shivan is a master and he's incredible. Uh, Tikmanchu Dulia and I did two films together. Um, Anant Mahadevan and I have a film releasing. 
Um, uh, Hardik Mehta is the director of my next film to release, which is Ruhi Afzana. That's me, Raj Kumar Rao, John B. Kapoor, and uh, Varun Sharma. So these are all my favorite directors to work with again. <laughs> Some of them bring something completely unique. And, and I'm not even mentioning ALVJ and PAVJ in the South. Um, you know, I've, you know, De, uh, um, Beto Brata, who made Chittagong. Um, I, it, it's like choosing a favorite flavor or choosing a favorite color. Everyone adds a different um, uh, beauty to, to the, to the uh, art of making cinema. And, and you, you just can't pick. It's just impossible to pick. Okay. So film or <laughs> You're looking for one answer, one, 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 one word. I'm not going to give that's you one okay, name. That's all right. The leading <laughs> question. <laughs> film or music? Film or music? Both. Film and music. Sorry, music and film. <laughs> oh, I screwed that up. Uh, okay. Both. Uh, music and film, as I mentioned a moment ago, I, I think that um, if you organically mix the two, you end up with with something truly beautiful. And I know it's not always possible because not all all films are about musicians. Um, but I think that when you when you organically mix the two, you come out with something that's exponentially more beautiful. And and I'd love to be part of more of that kind of cinema and series. Okay, great. I think that kind of brings us to the end of this talk. Um, awesome. I had a it's really been, great time talking to you. So easy to talk it's with. It's been my absolute pleasure. And I'm just going to plug real quick before we go, um, as all actors must. Uh, keep a lookout for Cherry. Um, I'll, I'll be uh, uh, appearing in that along with Imran Hashmi and Amitabh Bachchan uh, once again. Um, but uh, more exciting for me is Ruhi Afzana with Raj Kumar Rao, Van, John V. Kapoor, Varun Sharma, directed by Hardik Mehta. That will be coming out as soon as this situation clears up. Um, Golan Dodge with Dave Adhikari, directed by Drupal Banerjee. Um, and other films that I can't quite talk about yet because they haven't been announced. Um, but I'm super excited to share it with, with you, with all of your viewers. Um, and uh, just know that um, you know, as I'm preparing my next song, which is called 20 Days, which will release in the next few weeks, uh, I'm constantly thinking of everyone in India and hoping that the situation gets better soon. Um, despite the fact that it's getting a little bit worse, uh, I am planning on being back in India within a few weeks um, to, to resume working. And uh, I just urge everyone to, you know, resume work if you must, uh, but be careful, take it seriously and, uh, and be safe. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Take care of yourself and stay safe too. Thank you. You too. Yes. Bye. Namaskar. <laughs>